Rigid reamer holders are where it's at. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make one on your lathe. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. If you watched my chambering video with Bruce Tom at his personal shop, he's the owner of Bat Machine, you saw me introduced to his rigid reamer holder tool holding methodology. And this is really cool. I've used multiple types of reamer holders, floaters and other types, and this system is great. I'll tell you why, for a couple reasons. First, rigid tool holding is good tool holding. That is the religion, literally, that Bruce Tom has infected me with. More rigid, more better. The other issue you might run into with your lathe is the tail stock might not be perfectly aligned with the spindle in the head stock. So let's say you've got the wrong angle or the wrong height or your side to side slightly. Making your own rigid reamer holder will completely solve that issue and give you perfect rigid tool holding characteristics. This is gonna cut down on chatter. You're gonna hear a different sound. It's gonna be very solid and it's very accurate. So I'm a big fan of rigid reamer holders, but if you wanna make one, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. Another great thing I didn't mention, it's very, very affordable and perfectly flexible. I'll give you an example. 7 16 is the US standard for reamers. Almost all center fire reamers until you jump up to something like 50 BMG are gonna be 7 16 But what about when you want to use something like treble reamers from Germany? I've got a couple examples here. 12 millimeter would be your standard center fire cartridges. I've got a 50 BMG throater here. And then you've also got the 50 BMG with an integral 18 millimeter shank. Well, we can just as easily make a metric rigid reamer holder as we can a SAE 7 16 rigid reamer holder. So it also gives you a lot of flexibility. And these blanks are just Morse taper number four blanks with a tang. I got these online for about $16.70. Some of the specialty tool holding from Europe is going to be upwards of $500, $800 plus. This is extremely affordable. And one note, this is going to be specific to your machine. Once you machine it in place, it's perfectly aligned to your lathe. You need to align your lathe before you cut the tooling. But the cutting process is really simple. Let me give you a quick overview. So you're going to start by putting the Morse taper blank in your tailstock. You're going to get your tailstock up into position. Put a drill bit in your truck in the headstock and get the appropriate speed going and feed the tailstock in and do your pre-drill. For my last project, which was this 18 millimeter rigid reamer holder, I did this, I believe, in two different drilling steps. That is a good fit. That's what you want. So you're gonna pre-drill the bulk of the material and then you're gonna affix a boring head in your headstock. And this is the boring head that I used. And I had an experiment that didn't go so well initially. It wasn't a problem because I was just trying to bore the, the hole true. I was grabbing on this straight shank chucking up on that in the headstock, and I was getting a ton of chatter. And I thought to myself, well, that's not a very rigid tool. It's got this tiny little straight shank on it. So I channeled my inner Bruce Tom, and I decided to chuck up on the body. Look at how stout that is. I just had to align the, the chuck jaws properly so that I could get to the adjustment screw here. This made a night and day difference. If you've got a really rigid hold on your boring head, You've got a good quality boring bar that's sharp. You're going to get really good surface finish. And what's really important is not overcutting your hole. We get our dial indicator on the back side and very carefully zero it out. Okay, now we know where the boring head is before we loosen our locking clamp screws. We loosen those locking clamp screws and then very carefully make the adjustment until we see the needle move however much we want to take off in terms of radius. Our cut will be twice that. The diameter will uh, be affected by 2x the radius, obviously, simple geometry. And you want to prevent overshooting that final diameter. 
So I took a couple passes. I didn't have pin gauges at this side, size, so I had to take some approximate measurements with digital calipers. Not really the best way to go, but I took a little cut at a time, little cut, little cut, using the back side of the reamer. If you look at the flats, there's a very small little ground surface here that is the same diameter as the shank body itself. And I worked my way up two thousandths, one thousandth, a half of a thousandth, and I'm measuring each time. I'm turning at a fairly fast spindle speed. I'm cranking in and then cranking slow out. So I've got a cut going in and I've got a cut going back out. Very carefully working up. I finally got it to the point where I had to push really hard to get these edges to engage in. Okay, now I know I'm getting really close to my final diameter. And everything is cut perfectly straight and true. Perfectly coaxial with respect to the spindle. This is exactly what we want. Now before you take this Morse taper blank out of the tailstock, mark the top. Very important. A silver sharpie would be a great tool to do that with because you don't want it to index 180 and go in the wrong way because if you're high or low then you're going to be completely off. I forgot to do that this time so I had to use an indicator, a dial test indicator held in the truck and test both ways. I found the correct orientation and then marked it. Okay. So that's just a little sidelight. We then take the rigid reamer holder that we've just cut the hole for, put it in the headstock, clamp it, and hone it to the final shape. We're not going to change the real dimensions here. We're just basically affecting surface finish and taking off the tiniest amount of material. I used a wooden dowel with some sandpaper through a split cut on the end to very carefully hone with some machining oil on it and would test fit with the reamer until I got just the right fit. You can see here it's an airtight seal even without a, an O-ring. Really, really good fit. And of course, when you pull it out, you get that pop that, that you want. This is what's gonna help to ensure that we have the proper alignment. I then drilled and tapped. This is 5 16 18. And I know exactly where the reamer needs to be in terms of depth. I do a, twi a slight twisting of the reamer until I can feel the set screw hit the flat. Now I'm ready to go. We're going to be in perfect alignment. This is kind of a do or die deal, go on faith kind of situation because there's no give in the reamer. When you're down on the flats like that with the set screw, it's either going to cut perfectly or it's going to snap off. And that's where you have to be very sure of your lathe, very sure of your alignment, very sure of your feed and speed and all of that. And I haven't had a problem yet. I've got the 7 16 the 12, and the 18 millimeter. These all are, are working really well. And the evidence is in the cut. When you're reaming with the rigid reamer holder, you hear the chips curling inside the reamer flutes. It's a completely different sound than, than you'd hear with something like a floating reamer holder, where you hear the movement, you hear things kind of working around and all that. Kind of like reloading. Uh, you either allow the, the cartridge and the die to self-align, that would be like a floating reamer holder, or you hold everything in perfect alignment. You clamp it there and force everything uh, up into position with that perfect alignment. I prefer when I can to do the latter, but it's not entirely invalid to do the former. This is all your personal decision when it comes to your lathe tooling. So that's just kind of a sidelight, a quick look at how to make your own rigid reamer holder for under $20, much better than spending five, six, eight hundred dollars $800 on some proprietary tooling for a specialty application. If you have questions, if you have feedback on this, drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss all the builds related to this stuff. Anyhow, until next time, that concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. 
If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.